Yo llevo más de 10 años trabajando en toda la región con los distintos sistemas multilaterales, las organizaciones. No existe otra organización como el Diálogo Interamericano que permita, desde una perspectiva no gubernamental, sin influencia eh, política determinante eh, de los gobiernos, eh, convocar a líderes de todas las eh, orillas políticas para conversar sobre temas regionales de enorme importancia. Problems are never going to be solved with only one sector or one point of view. And so the idea that inspired the dialogue was to bring people together who didn't agree. The dialogue is a really important think tank. And also throughout the years we have found it uh, somehow of, a, of an ally in terms of debating ideas in a positive way. Any ideas that emerge from just one narrow slice of society are unlikely really to be effective and sustainable over the long term. And so the idea was to try to identify those critical sectors that make up a very complex, diverse society and to do our best to get people who represent very different points of view. Even though Latin America is a large and diverse region, when it comes to education, it really shares a lot of common challenges. And that creates a great opportunity to think and to operate as a region in terms of shaping policy agendas in the field of education. I think in many respects, what's exciting about the Inter-American Dialogue is you've created a different kind of network of people who care about this issue, who want to give all kids a fair start, and who are working at the level of public policy in particular. We're in the midst of a, a very interesting exercise of, of connectivity, where we've worked with countries in the region trying to shape and form a regional agenda for change related to early childhood development. Energy is fundamental to economic prosperity, and in a globalized world, energy is increasingly flowing across borders, both in the hemisphere and beyond. And energy integration is critical to reducing costs for electricity and fuel, providing energy security. Energy integration also facilitates the entry into the grid of renewable energy sources like wind and solar. Even though we understand very well how feasible energy integration is, the biggest barrier is really political. It's really about getting countries to come together and trust each other. So the Energy, Climate Change and Extractive Industries program tries to harness the positive benefits of energy integration. We create a platform that brings together energy experts, policymakers, and energy companies to try to understand the challenges and benefits to energy integration. The Peter D. Bell program is the Dialogue's flagship program on democracy, human rights, anti-corruption, and citizen security. And when we look at the Americas today, we see that the challenges in these areas are increasingly transnational. Whether it's a multinational corporation running a corruption scheme through shell companies abroad, whether it's a criminal gang engaging in human trafficking, or whether it's a democratic breakdown that sparks a migration crisis. There's real power in working not just across countries, but across sectors. Los grandes carteles, la criminalidad organizada hoy, del narcotráfico, del contrabando, del tráfico de personas, son regionales. Y el acercamiento tiene que ser regional. Y eso es lo que el diálogo permite. We're hopeful that this is a moment where there's a real opportunity to not only propose solutions, but to be able to see them enacted. And so we're eager to push those solutions forward. I feel very fortunate to be in residence here at the Dialogue and to be able to take advantage of the remarkable network that the Dialogue has established over the course of 30 years. We have, as, as a program, expanded this network to include far more actors from Asia, not only China, where we work very extensively, but also in Japan and Korea. And the Dialogue has launched Japan Latin America Roundtable. It's connecting the world is uh, one of the uh, very unique aspect of this organization. We're extremely excited to be developing 
an initiative to bring together what we consider to be the leading next generation in China Latin America analysis, including cultivating some of the practitioners who will be working in the field to actually develop the linkages needed to promote mutually beneficial engagement in the coming years. Well, my research interest is in how China's presence in Latin America has been, you know, shaping this region. But I did not have resources to reach out to Latin American communities, so the dialogue is connecting me to all the communities there. Remittances is a family obligation. It's the money that person living abroad sends to the relatives. And the transfer in itself establishes a linkage. And the consequence of it is the establishment of a, of a substantive value chain that creates a significant sources of income for developing countries. And basically, there is a grid of connectivity established. At the dialogue, we manage a program called Migration and Development. And what we do is to identify those spaces of economic growth that we can create through the economics of migration. So we implement financial education programs that generate thousands if not millions of savings of people formalized into the financial system. That money is then mobilized into credit for the local economy. My hope for the dialogue looking forward is to expand in different ways. We now even have an office based in Guatemala. It's the first footprint the dialogue has ever had in the region. And so we are reaching out in ways, deepening our networks. The focus has changed and evolved over time, and so has the approach. But I think what continues is this idea of uh, convocar, to bring people together.